here we are having a blast doing it <laughs> and getting a chance to interview someone like Clint Dempsey. You've done an unbelievable job, by the way. Awesome job as a studio analyst for Fox during the World Cup. Saw him yesterday after the game. Did a terrific job. By the way, Clint, where are you right now? We're at the Fox set here in uh, Doha, Qatar. Oh, that looks awesome, man. Really appreciate you coming on the show. It's Ross Tucker. I got the call late last night that Dan was under the weather, so I'm filling in for him. Former NFL offensive lineman, although, as I mentioned earlier, I was on the why I'm missing under 8, under 10, and under 12 A team for soccer, Clint. So just so you know, right. not the B team. Okay. I made A team all six years. All right. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I've always wanted to ask you, by the way? you By the way, you might be one of my favorite soccer players to ever watch. Just like the attitude you played with, the aggression. Um, you got, I could tell you got some uh, some football player in you. What always blew me away about you, Clint, is that you're from Texas. Like, I guess, yeah. I, you know, knowing what I know, I played for the Cowboys. Like, I'm amazed that you came from Texas because I just don't picture people even being allowed to play soccer in Texas. How did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I grew up in a small town, Nacogdoches, one of the oldest town, oldest town in Texas and, uh, was playing everything growing up. And I just kind of gravitated towards that sport. We had a large Hispanic, uh, population, uh, in our community and was able to play the game with them. And then took my game to Dallas to play at the club level. But yeah, all through high school, people were talking trash. Why are you playing this sport? Why are you doing that? And, I guess it ended up working out. I ended up being able to represent my country in the World Cup, three World Cups. Was able to be a captain in one of those World Cups. And, uh, yeah, was able to be a kid for a little bit longer by playing the game that I love. Well, it definitely worked out for you. Thoroughly enjoyed watching you in all those World Cups and thoroughly enjoyed watching yesterday. I live, uh, Clint, I live five minutes from Hershey. I live, Hershey's right down the street. So, obviously, what Christian – has been able to do is very exciting for all of us. Let's just start, though, with the game itself. I just kind of want your overall breakdown of the game yesterday against Iran. Okay, yeah. I mean, going into the third game, uh, we got we got two draws. The first game, you feel like almost it's, it's a draw, but it felt like a loss. We're winning one nothing. We conceded the penalty in the 83rd minute to Wales. The second game, we got a draw against um, England. Being the underdog, we fought hard and and we showed um, a lot of grit and we had a lot of uh, the better chances. We could have won that game. That draw ended up feeling like a win. But the problem you have going into that last game is we only had two shots on goal and where are the goals going to come from? And talking about people who are going to step up, Christian uh, Pulisic was one of the guys that um, when's he going to have his moment, even though he did get the assist in the first game, was he going to be able to, to, to get his goal and, what a goal he got. Uh, they got us uh, the, the first goal, got us uh, the win. But first half, the whole tournament, I think we played good in every single first half. But two of the the the, the second halves, I didn't think we played, you know, played well. In the Wales game, I didn't think we played well. We sat back. We, we absorbed pressure. We conceded the penalty. We got the draw. And the last game, I just felt like the second half, we just sat back, absorbed pressure, and made it stressful for all the American fans uh, watching at home. I just would like to see us be a little bit more, have a little bit more depth in our team. It just looks like when Christian went out, when Weston McKinney goes out, he seems to be having an injury that only allows him to play 60, 65, 70 minutes. And once some players start to come out of that starting 11, you start to see a drop in our team. And also, I think we're still looking for that number nine. I thought Sargent did play well in the last game and with his hold up play and creating chances. So it'd be interesting to see what we end up doing. Uh, and in, in the in the knockout stages versus, versus Netherlands. Well, I appreciate you saying that because as a guy that, you know, as a football player, the second half, I was very frustrated because the first half, we were utterly dominant. So many chances on goal. Even that second goal by way, uh, yeah, I thought was borderline on the offside. You'd have to tell me if that yeah. was legit or not. But then the second half, it was like we were just trying to hold on. I mean, we were clearly the better team. I didn't really understand why it seemed like they took their foot. We, we barely even controlled the ball at all in the second half. Yeah, I just think we lost a little bit of the rhythm with Christian not being in there. He's a, he's more of a th threat and has a better uh, hold-up play and, and being able to take the game to the opponent. Weston McKinney going out, 
um, because of, you know, the, the monitoring his injury that he's come back into the game with. And I thought we made too many defensive changes in the, uh, the 80th minute when you knew that there was going to be a lot of time added on. And even though we saw the game out and the subs looked like they worked, in my opinion, it just – we absorbed a lot of pressure. We put a lot of people in the back. And I think at times people didn't know who needed where. And it was just kind of like certain players came on the pitch. They weren't able to link passes. It almost looked like they were a little bit out of their depth. But at the end of the day, a lot of these guys, it's their first World Cup. The only player with World Cup experience is DeAndre Yedlin. So in, in terms of what this group has been able to do, get out of the group and now have the opportunity to do something special against Netherlands, hopefully we can get as many people back on the pitch healthy and uh, look forward to uh, making history. Let's talk about the Pulisic goal, Clint, because you mentioned it. Um, obviously, it was awesome that he – you could see him – ahead of time, see that there might be that opportunity on the cross and get the the explosiveness to get past the defender. Uh, your thoughts on his goal and in, in particular the injury he suffered because we've yeah. been talking a lot. I mean, it was very clear to me that he took a knee to the nuts right when he scored the goal. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? Is that a common thing in soccer? I mean, there's all kinds of things that happen. You know, I broke my nose, <laughs> broke my jaw. You know, broke both my wrists. I mean, you, you're going to you're gonna put your body on the line. Uh, good things will happen, but sometimes bad things happen. But the, the thing that impressed me most about the goal is the 12, 13 passes that led to it. That would have been Spain. Everybody would have been showing all the passes in the buildup instead of just the highlights. So that was good to see how we're changing the way that, that soccer is perceived uh, in, in other countries and, and at home. But, yeah, great ball from Weston McKinney. I think our midfield has been unbelievable this whole tournament. And uh, good ball to Sergino Des, who, who gets the ball across uh, the, the goal, the goal mouth. And then Christian having the hunger, smelling it out, putting his body on the line and, and really giving us that moment, his moment that, you know, adding to his legacy, of what he's been able uh, to do in this game uh, for, for our country. So hopefully he'll get back. I'm hearing it's uh, a pelvic contusion. And, um, you, you know, he was all happy spirits. Uh, it showed some videos of him after the game. So. Hopefully they're able to to manage that and he can get back on the pitch. What about the the goal by Wea on the offsides? I guess first of all, did you yeah. agree with the offsides call? And then just a more general question: Do you think that that should be the rule that like if any part of your body is in front? Because I mean, he seemed like he was pretty even, man. Yeah, I mean, I I kind of agree with you. I made that point to Alexi, and he's like. Where do you draw the line? Are you either pregnant or you're not? And I'm like, well, if anybody knows about being pregnant, it's me, my family, because we've had, dang, six kids. But for me, I feel like if half of your body is in, in line with, with the other player, that like in baseball, I feel like the tie should go to the runner, right? You want to see more goals. You want to see more exciting things that happen on the pitch. And for me, I agree with you. I would like for that to be the case, but it isn't. If any part of your body is ahead of the other person, like if you're running a race, well, then it's going to be an offsides call. They got it to the, with the technology now that they can show that line. But I'm with you. I'd like to see if it's close. Let it go with the attacking team. Love it. That makes me feel better. I'm, that, I feel better about that now. All right. Let's get into the Netherlands now. What do we need to know? I've seen some of the odds on DraftKings and other places that it seems like we're a pretty heavy underdog. Do you agree with that and yeah. why? Yeah, I mean, I think so in terms of the World Cup experience that we have, but I, I think this feed, this team feeds off being the underdog because you look how they played against England. They they were the underdog in that match, but I think they had the better chances, to be honest with you, and it looked like we could have won that game. Um, things to watch out for with this uh, Netherlands side, obviously Virgil van Dijk in the back, he's going to be tough to break down. Um, he, he's just a strong presence there in the midfield. You got De Jong that plays at Barcelona, but I think our midfield will be able to nullify that. But also, you got to watch out for Gakpo and Depay. Depay now is coming back into the team, being more fit. Um, he's contributed probably, what, 42 goals in, in uh, 83 games that he's played for his coach. He's averaging a goal a game. He had a part to play in both of the goals they scored in their last game. And then Gakpo, he's the player that scored in every single game of the group stage. So we're going to have to figure out a way to, to calm him down and, and calm him down and not let him stay on the fire, that um, the hot streak that he's on. So be aware of those guys. But I think, hey, we got a good as chance as any against this team. And as long as we have our players fit, I like our fighting chance. Make sure you check out Clint daily on Fox and FS1's FIFA World Cup tournament coverage. 
leading all the way up to the gigantic round of 16 match for the U.S. men this Saturday morning versus the Netherlands. Live coverage starts on Fox at 9 a.m. Eastern from Qatar with kickoff at 10 a.m. Eastern. Can't wait. Clint, thank you so much for the time, man. Really appreciate it. Hey, appreciate you, bro. Take care.